Now we have a new section. This new section basically discusses the data values from a general point of view, not from any particular application X. First, a slide on the sizes of data. Anybody who uses the web knows that when you come to this, if you want to find out about something non-trivial, you can get an answer, but you also can get lots of answers. So when you come to basic questions like what is the size of the web, and what is the largest source of data, you will get answers which vary by large factors in different places on the web. What I have here are some numbers that uh, uh, I found or took from people who, who, who put them in papers. And they're meant to give you some idea of what's going on. Notice the units, the units are terabytes, tera is 10 to the 12th, or petabyte, petabytes are 10 to the 15th. So if you look at the number of web pages, and you will estimate there's maybe around 10 petabytes of data in web pages. Web pages being not having, uh, having significant uh, imagery on them, or especially no video, they're not actually as significant in terms of size as the rich media web, where YouTube is a good example, where every minute uh, 48 hours of video are uploaded. And um, this, there's an estimate here that every year 2.5 petabytes uh, is uploaded to YouTube. We will discuss the exciting Large Hadron Collider, that's the physics instrument that has uh, discovered the Higgs boson. That corresponds to about 15 petabytes of data per year. A striking statistics comes from radiology or medical imagery, where ignoring uh, cardiology, uh, we still have 69 petabytes per year. Adding in cardiology, we will get up to an exabyte. That's a thousand petabytes uh, per year. There's some new telescopes coming along that will be. Uh, Dramatic in size, the squared kilometer array telescope will give hundreds of terabits per second. If you look at some other fields, you'll find, for instance, that the Earth Science Field has a few petabytes total. One of the projects I'm associated with analyzing uh, data from um, observations at the North and South Pole, that has maybe nearly a total of petabytes so far. It gets hundreds of terabytes per year. If we look at earthquake science, that doesn't have much data, partly for a good reason, there are not so many earthquakes. Um, another area which is again slightly outside this course is actually looking at large scale simulations and see what happens when you checkpoint or visualize the simulations produced on exascale machines. Those give you um, uh, data sizes that correspond to terabytes of data per second. Here we have a set of slides. A lot of these slides come from other places I found on the web. You will find that anything I took from the web gives you the link on the slide somewhere, usually at the top or the bottom, depending on whether it's where it's convenient to put. Here we have um, Tom Davenport highlighting areas that he thinks are important big data use cases. Uh, he emphasizes LinkedIn what you might call social media analytics, or of course social media informatics. Uh, the use of analytics on voice data and call centers. Um, if you look at the basic analysis of Twitter data and blogs, or just the internet, then we have text analytics. That uh, uh, Another example of that is analysis of warranties and customer feedback from um, from purchasing, that's another important big data use case, which is sort of revolutionizing a lot of business applications. Video is a huge um, data source. We mentioned that for YouTube. Uh, we have videos in stores, which are tracking what people do. Obviously, there's important surveillance applications of videos. Police, that's, that's the police application. Um, more generally, intelligence applications when we take video, say, of, of uh, UAVs overflying hostile territory. Um, in 
the science slash health area, we have genomic data, which we'll come back to. And that, of course, is ex pretty exciting because there's some hope that a better study of people's genomes will give you early signals of possible uh, problem areas, which allow better treatment and healthier people. Here's a slide from IBM at the same uh, Berkeley uh, Big Data um, uh, Conference. And it discusses, uh, from the business point of view, all the different segments that uh, will benefit from, from big data. So we have, if we go from the bottom left, we have uh, business uh, development, um, which is uh, trying to find out new ways to monetize uh, what we do. Uh, we have marketing, which is analyzing the uh, the use of uh, use pattern of uh, of our resources. We have finance, which is an for example here is given as analyzing core detail records uh, due to uh, getting better billing. Business analysis analysis of social media uh, bars around various new offerings. Uh, we have here real time uh, feeding of this information to to executive leaders. And we have actually part of the largest source of these bubbles emerging to the top right. That's Facebook, Google, YouTube, Twitter, etc. And also they put here the GPS signals and the associated data from smartphones. Finally, at the top, uh, the middle, well, uh, sorry, the middle top, we have network operations, where of course there's just a lot of data on the tag network operations in any. Uh, um, in any system, distributed system, uh, which can then both identify what, where, where, um, where people are at, uh, accessing the systems from, and also possibly identify um, um, denial of service attacks, or just better ways of optimizing the network so that people get the great experience that will encourage them to buy at a site rather than be worried by the local fault. Performance. Here is another Davenport slide, and you have to ask, um, what's characteristic of big data? And um, it's not just that it's big; it's also diverse in structure. It's um, not clearly analyzable easily, say, by traditional methods such as those pioneered for databases, which were the originally dominated. Uh, at least business storage of, of information. We've already pointed out where it comes from. The internet, social media, genomics, voice, video, and very important, the internet of things, sensors everywhere. And we need to analyze it. And as we'll see, this data is so large that in some sense the analysis is easier. There is so much data that it implies an answer without making as many assumptions or building models as we used to in the past. So, <clears throat> and one, what features does it have? Well, it, and one feature of it has is it's streaming. The data is not just static, there's just new data coming every, every second. And we'll have a nice slide on that from uh, a talk I, I found on the web. Um, if we look at um, what we need is, we need not just statistical analysts, we need data scientists who can put together the complete um, process or the complete system that goes from the raw data through the final wisdom. So, and here at the bottom here it just says, this is gonna imply new ways of doing things and new processes that we must adopt, so this is why students are going into this field. We need new fresh minds and their new jobs opened up by the big data. Now there are the basic transformation from data to information, information to knowledge, that is done by, a, by definition by a filter. That filter is going to be run by systems like Hadoop, which is an example of a map produced process. And we're going to have tools such as natural language processing, that's NLP. And they are going to tell us 
are deeper things about the data as it comes in. And broadly, machine learning is getting more and more important. These are the sophisticated analytic routines, support vector machines, clustering, and so on, which are going to be used to find out information from this enormous data deluge. At the bottom, he mentions um, open source. This is a new field. We need to uh, somehow collect together and identify key software, key algorithms, make it available so everybody can use it. And here, the uh, statistics language R has established itself as a dominant force with a large library of important uh, analysis programs. Here's a slide from The Economist, uh, 2010s, so it's already sort of somewhat out of date. It points out that in 2005, uh, we created 150 exabytes. An exabyte is, remember, 1,000 petabytes of data. And in 2010, it estimates that we will create 1,200 exabytes, or we created 1,200 exabytes. So this is the flood or the deluge of data which is, of course, illustrated in this pretty picture of the bits raining down on the fellow who is uh, absorbing them, processing them. And then you see the wisdom is coming out of his uh, hose uh, through, the, through the nozzle and watering the, the plant, which we could view as the Garden of Eden or something of wisdom in a particular field. This was taken from a very nice data science course at um, uh, Berkeley. Well, he this comes from The Economist, but Jeff Hammerbacher in this course identified this particular source as very, is a very good. 